What up ladies and gents, this is going to be the legendary video and here we're going to talk about how to get the legendaries in Shadowlands, uh, how it all works, the system behind it and you know, give, get you guys a little bit more information on what's going on with it, how it works uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the powers you know, that, that the legendaries provide, all the different uh, available options and I'm going to put a spreadsheet in the description that has all the different drop locations uh, for the legendary powers themselves. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I guess the first thing you'll want to know is, you know, how, how do I go about getting these legendaries? What do I have to do? And there are a few different parts that you need to create a legendary. You need a base item. Right now on the beta, there's a vendor. Uh, but on live, these base items will be achieved through professions. So the cloth ones obviously will be from tailoring. Uh, necklace and ring will be from jewel crafting, uh, etc. Then the second and third things that you need are two missives uh, of the stats that you wish to have on your legendary. So this gives you a lot of control uh, over what stats will be on your legendary. It's not going to be random, which I think is fantastic from Blizzard. Uh, something we've been asking for for a little while, I would say. So really, really happy about the way they've gone about doing this. Uh, the next thing that you'll need is Soul Ash. And this is not as simple as just buying a bag of Soul Ash from a vendor for one silver, I'm afraid. Uh, the Soul Ash will come from Torghast. And as you complete tiers through Torghast, uh, you will obtain Soul Ash once per week for each tier that you do. And I believe if you complete, say, tier 5 or something, you get the Soul Ash for all the tiers beneath that tier. So you don't have to keep farming the same thing mindlessly, which is nice considering um, the pain that we've been going through with the visions in BFA. So definitely a change. Uh, the final thing that you will need to craft a legendary is uh, a legendary power, depending on which one you want. And this will be the special effect that makes your legendary unique. Uh, I guess it's important to know that you can use one legendary at a time, at least for, for you know, the foreseeable future. Maybe it's something later on in the expansion will allow us to use more. But for now, it's only one. So to obtain these legendary powers, there are they basically drop from all kinds of different content. They're buyable from rep vendors. Uh, they drop from dungeons, from raids, from PvP. Basically all kinds of different content and it, it, sort of in the way that you know you you've got essences in BFA but it looks to be a lot less grindy which is definitely a plus because this means it's most likely going to be more alt friendly than BFA was uh fingers crossed fingers crossed So let's take a look at some of the legendary powers which are actually in the adventure guide. Uh, so that makes it easy, easy viewing for us, which is handy. So there's eight powers that are generic to all classes. Then you have four that are generic to your class in particular. And then you have four that are in particular uh, unique to whichever spec you are playing. So we have four for Holy, four for Shadow, and four for Disc. Now it's important to note that you can actually use these legendary powers uh, even when you're in another spec at the moment. So for example, you can run Shadow, or rather you can run a Shadow Legendary as Disc, uh, because obviously as Disc you have Mind Blast, you have Shadow of Death, you have Shadow Fiend, you can make use of this. Uh, much in the same way that the uh, Azerite uh, talent Death Throws in BFA was usable by Disc uh, and was actually one of the best Azerite traits. So, so far you can do this. Uh, whether or not Blizzard kind of limits this going forward, we'll have to wait and see. I hope they don't. I think it makes for more interesting choices. Uh, but let's get into the more generic powers that are available. So we've got Echo of ENR. 
Summon a spiritual familiar to your side. Your spells have, uh, your spells and abilities have a chance to send your familiar to a nearby ally, increasing their damage and healing by 10% for 15 seconds. If no allies are present, your familiar will flock towards your nearest enemy, increasing your damage against them by 8% for 15 seconds. So this kind of lends itself to both group and solo play. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well these legendary powers are balanced because I feel like some of them are clearly going to be better than others. Uh, but again, remains to be seen. We've got Judgment of the Arbiter. Dealing damage has a high chance to release a blast of spiritual energy for 596 holy damage. I'm guessing this is going to scale. If another ally who bears the Judgment of the Arbiter is within 5 to 20 yards of you, the blast will also arc to them, dealing 596 holy damage. So this is one of those powers uh, that scales up depending on you know how many people are using it, which is kind of cool. We got Norganon's Sagacity. Sagacity. Casting a spell grants Sagacity, stacking up to 10. When you move, you are able to cast while moving for 0 0.5 seconds for each stack. So potentially up to 5 seconds moving while casting. This is this is very reminiscent of a legendary in Legion. Uh, the boots. It's nice to see that coming back. I feel like this was quite tough to use well. Um. But I think if you can use it well, then it definitely can help you, mi uh, what's it, min-max, I guess, in certain situations. We've got Cephas's Proclamation. Reduce the effectiveness of crowd-controlling effects by 10%, successfully applying a loss of control effect to an enemy, interrupting an enemy, or dispelling a target. Will increase your secondary stats by 53 for 15 seconds. This cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this. I, I, don't, I just want to gloss over most of the stuff and just kind of talk about what the, the powers are themselves rather than kind of getting too an analytical. Uh, I will do a tier list video uh, coming up next where I'm going to talk a little bit more about these powers in depth. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm gonna just going to press on. Um, we've got Stable Phantasma Lure. Increases Phantasma earned by 25%. Looting Phantasma from enemies has a chance to summon a Phantasma Demon, which will begin running in a random direction. Killing it increases Phantasma earned for entire party by an additional 10% for one minute. I mean, this is definitely an interesting one. Um, at this point, I don't even know what Phantasma is for. I'm guessing it's something to do with Torghast. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to see, seeing if that's gonna be a big worth we've got third eye of the jailer killing a creature in the moor increases your damage by two percent killing a creature with the same name continues to stack this effect up to five times stacks are reset if you kill a creature with a different name so it, it very much looks like blizzard wants us to swap around which legendary we're using like a lot depending on the content that we're doing which is interesting because i feel like they haven't really had that in mind in the past like it's kind of been a side effect of just people wanting to min max but i don't feel like blizzard has really ever actively created things with that in mind and i think this this is definitely headed in that direction which is definitely interesting uh the first time you damage an elite enemy absorb the next 13k damage from that enemy and reflect it back to them that's cool you may have one shield active at a time, and this effect may only occur once every minute. Okay. Killing an enemy has a high chance to summon an explosive Morat at the corpse's location. After six seconds, the Morat will explode, dealing 358 nature damage to all nearby enemies, poisoning them and increasing their damage done by 5%. Um, I think some of these some of these powers definitely need tuning by the looks of it. Right, on to the priest legendaries. So this is where we're, where we get a little bit juicy with this stuff. So we've got Measured Contemplation. Uh, for every 15 seconds that you do not cast Shadow Mend, or if you're in Holy Flash Heal, the healing of your next Shadow Mend or Flash Heal is increased by 50%. This effect can stack up to four times. Okay. Twins of the Sun Priestess. Power Infusion also grants you 100% of its effect when used on an ally. So that's cool.
That's really cool. I really enjoy using PI as it is, so getting extra value from it. Can't complain, right? When purge, the wicked expires on a target. Three allies within 30 yards of the target are healed for 657. Okay. And the final priest generic legendary is Vault of Heavens. Leap of Faith instead causes you to leap to your target and has two charges. So this was actually a glyph uh, before glyphs got retired. I believe it was, was it Wad? Can't quite remember. It was, it was the mop or what I believe. Um, it's, this was actually a glyph that basically reversed your grip. Uh, but this is going a step further and giving it two charges. So this looks like it's going to be really fun to use. Um, priest mobility, as we know, is not great. So having this is going to be a big boost in certain situations. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. And then onto the disc legendaries. So we've got four of them. We've got the penitent one. Power word radiance has a 50% chance to cause your next penance to be free and fire three extra bolts. So this is gonna be like penance on steroids when you get that. Sad that it's only 50% chance to proc because radiance isn't that commonly used, but looks looks like a, a cool effect when it does. Then we got crystalline reflection. So this is this is reflective shield. Uh, from, from when did reflective shield go? Was that Kata the last time we had a reflective shield? remember it's, it's been so long so it's, it's nice to see this coming back power word shield instantly heals the target for 552 and reflects 20 percent of the damage absorbed so this has actually already been nerfed once on b say it was 30 percent uh nice to see the healing portion of, of power word shield coming back as well so i think this looks like a, a really decent pick and then kiss of death reduces shadow of death's cooldown by eight seconds and causes its damage to trigger atonement when used on targets below 20 percent health so currently, when you shadow a death someone, it actually doesn't the, the damage portion doesn't count towards your atonement healing. So what this is doing is when you're when you're executing something with shadow a death, it will cause atonement healing. Uh, I think the the big takeaway from this is the reduction in cooldown by eight seconds. Uh, that will bring it down to ten seconds cooldown, which is going to be valuable in PvP, I think, in certain certain comps. Uh, so yeah, this one looks very decent, very solid. And then the last one is Clarity of Mind. During Rapture, Power Shield costs 20% less mana and applies 6 second longer atonements. Uh, so definitely good for mana efficiency. Bit more of a PvE one there, I think, by the looks of it. Then we're going to take a look at the Holy Ones and then f uh, finish up with the Shadow Ones. So, this will be fun to read. Zanshi, Return of Archbishop Benedictus. Uh, after Spirit of Redemption expires, you will revive at up to 100% health based on your effectiveness during Spirit of Redemption. After reviving, you cannot benefit from Spirit of Redemption for 10 minutes. So what's this? Like a cheat death for Holy Priests by the looks of it. That's cool. That's really cool. We've got Harmonious Apparatus. Circle of Healing reduces the cooldown of Holy Word Sanctify. Prayer of Mending reduces the cooldown of Serenity. And Holy Fire reduces the cooldown of Chester. So this one basically is increasing the pool of spells that reduce their corresponding Holy Words. Uh, which I think is cool. I think that this definitely will change the way that you can play Holy and will uh, allow you to play Holy in a slightly different way. So I like that. I think that's a really cool legendary. Uh, flash Concentration. Each time you cast Flash Heal, Heal has its casting time reduced by 0.1 seconds and healing increased by 3%, stacking up to 5 times. Uh, I believe this lasts, I believe the buff lasts for 15 seconds. Uh, I think that this is going to pigeonhole you a little bit too much into making sure you always have this buff stacked at 5 uh, in order to get like most value out of it. Uh, so I don't like that, but it's a cool design. Um, going back to measured contemplation as well, I feel like the 15 seconds is too long. This is, this is very similar to the Depths of Shadows uh, trait in BFA. However, that continues to stack again immediately while, while you have to wait 15 seconds for this to stack. So I think that if 
you do have to cast a mend like at 14 seconds or something you're going to be punished pretty hard for that by this legendary and lose a lot of value out of it so that's a little bit rough in my opinion just going back to that real quick uh the last one is divine image when you use a holy word spell you have a chance to summon an image of naru at your side for 15 seconds whenever you cast a spell the naru will cast a similar spell um, I mean, I think this, again, comes down to the scaling, whether or not it's it's a big one, right? Like, if the Naru is, is doing, like, 10% of your spell in terms of value, then it's not great. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. The, I feel like tuning has not been done yet on beta, so... Eagerly awaiting that one to see which classes are going to be fully meta uh, beyond their class design. Uh, the last four are for Shadow. We've got Pain Breaker Psalm. Shadow of Death consumes 6 seconds of Shadow of Pain and VT, instantly dealing the damage to the target and generating 10 insanity. So this is kind of going to change the rotation a little bit of Shadow, I feel like. Uh, whereby if you're using this, you just want a death on, on cooldown, pretty much. By the looks of it. And then we've got Shadow Flame Prism. Mind Blast and Shadow of Death cause your Shadow Fiend to teleport behind your target, slashing up to 5 nearby enemies for 2.5. 4-ish K. Shadow Flame damage. Each time a Rift is triggered, the duration of Shadow Fiend is increased by 1.5 seconds. So this is actually really good for Burst. Uh, and will kind of demand that you're Mind Blasting and Deathing again on cooldown while Shadow Fiend is up. So this, this kind of Legendary I really like because it's changing your rotation. It's changing how you're playing your class. And I think that's interesting. I think that more stuff needs to be built with that in mind mind flay and mindset have a chance to spawn a void tendril or void lasher that channels at your target for 15 seconds generating three insanity every 0.9 seconds so this is just a proc essentially that gets you extra insanity um which is what i mean about it not really changing your rotation like you're not going to play differently because you have this in my opinion uh and the final one uh, is Talbadar's Stratagem. While you have Shadow of Pain, Devouring Plague, and VT active on the same target, your Mind Blast deals 30% more damage. So is that 30% more damage on the target, or just 30% damage in general? I feel like that tooltip needs a little bit of clarification. But yeah, I mean, this, this definitely looks solid. Like, obviously, when you are when you have your, v, uh, your VT up, your Pain up, and, and then you pop Devouring Plague on that target, you want to be bursting that target. So having Mind Blast deal more damage is definitely something that you want. So definitely not a bad pick either. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the numbers break down in terms of what's strongest and what not. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's all the legendaries, guys. So this was the Shadowlands Basic Legendary video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, remember to check the description if you are interested in any further info on, or more specific info on, you know, drop locations, uh, which slot these legendaries can go in, that sort of thing. Uh, as I said, I'll put that in the description. Uh, the next video will be most likely a tier list uh, for different types of content uh, where I rate the different legendaries and we kind of go through them in a little bit more depth and detail to figure out which ones, you know, we really want to try and get and, and focus on getting uh, and which ones we think are going to be a bit, you know, awful. Which I'm sure will happen. Uh, it's usually a tough thing for Blizzard to balance. Uh, if you guys like the new Shadowlands content, I don't say this very often, but please do give the video uh, a like. Drop a subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Um, it will be much appreciated. Uh, until the next time, Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.